Um, hello and welcome everybody. Um, um, I'm really pleased to be here for the second time to present uh, my, di um, my executive director's report. Um, and, um, I, you know, whilst I'm really disappointed we're not having this meeting in person, um, I do find Zoom does enable us to be, um, you know, connected in many different ways. So really just to look back on the last year, it's been another year of extraordinary change for the CBA. Um, we've been trying new things. We've been trying to be more outward looking and to try and increase our presence. And I, I do have to say here, I'm extremely fortunate to have an absolutely brilliant staff team who are incredibly dedicated. They are exceptionally creative and you know they are constantly looking at ways in which we can present the work of the CBA, the ways we can reach out to our, to our members and really at the heart of everything we do, champion archeology span and in particular champion public participation in archeology. span We want to see as many people involved in archeology span as possible. I'd like to reiterate something that Ken mentioned earlier about um, uh, staff changes. So Ken, you know, really gracefully mentioned um, Helen Wilkinson leaving, and I'd really like to reiterate um, the comments he said about Helen. Um, the CBA is fortunate to be here because Helen actually managed to help us navigate all the challenges of COVID. But also we've uh, lost in the last six months our director for CBA in Wales, Cy Griffiths. Cy's moved to become a, a, a conservation officer at Brecon Beacons National Park. Um, Cy was instrumental in keeping our focus of activities in Wales aligned to what people of Wales wanted to see and um, what the Welsh Government uh, saw as its priorities. Um, we are really keen to um, replace that role and to make sure that we keep our focus in Wales, you know, really on the ball and really sharp. And we are in the middle of a process of talking to some of our key stakeholders about how we should do that in the future moving forwards. But I'd also like to offer my thanks to Sai for all of the all of the work she did um, for us and keeping that presence in in Wales alive. Um, over the last year, what we've really seen developing is an, an annual CBO programme now, um, of which the AGM is a really important part and the Ducardi lecture. Um, we've seen, um, you know, new approaches tried during the Festival of Archaeology. Um, so in 2020, as we know, we were entirely online. We, we, we didn't really have a, a, an in-person event. In 2021, we actually um, put on a hybrid event or with a series of blended programs. So that was on the ground and, and, and um, uh, online. Um, and it was absolutely fantastic. And what we were able to do is start to use the AGM and the festival as starting points and ending points for a lot of other activity. So the AGM launched the theme of the festival last year, which was exploring local places, again, helping people to get out and about and look around. And then during the Festival of Archaeology, we actually launched the Archaeological Achievement Awards. Formerly known as the British Archaeological Awards, the CBA has taken over the running of them. We've changed the name because we've extended the reach of the awards to include the Republic of Ireland. So we're really looking at now an award that actually is focusing on, on, on archaeology across the British Isles and the Island of Ireland. We were really grateful that in December we were able to host the awards. Um, we were due to be um, in Edinburgh, but uh, Storm Barra got in the way, uh, and so we actually ended up presenting the awards online. We, ha we had a virtual award ceremony, and I think that just goes to indicate just how resilient the CBA teams become. We put that, we changed from a live award ceremony to a virtual award ceremony in less than 24 hours. Uh, and again, I'm really grateful to all the staff who helped that happen, but to actually all the nominations. We had 85 in the end, which was just quite outstanding. And then all our supporters and sponsors who actually helped us put on that. Um, as Ken mentioned, we've got a new website um, which ties these things together and, and hopefully presents our work in a far more engaging way. But again, more importantly, as I'll come on to a little bit later, will enable members to engage with us in a, in a different way. And then finally, running throughout everything we've, we've got, obviously, is our Young Archaeologists Club. Um, I am hugely proud of what our um, youth engagement team do around the Young Archaeologists Club and much wider youth engagement. 
I think the CBA is really fortunate to have YAC in our stable of uh, activities. And, you know, we've got to make more of the fact uh, to show you as members how you enable um, young people to get involved in archaeology. So currently, YAC is, is helping in, in the region of 2,000 young people experience archaeology and get involved and I think if you go on um, to the social media around YAC you'll just see some absolutely brilliant projects. So 2021 has been a year of change for us, we're doing things differently and that change has been um, as much about me changing and learning new things as it has been about the rest of the staff and the team. So this year we had a brilliant young kickstart placement um, uh, and a shout out loud placement. So two funding schemes where we were able to employ young people for a short period of time. And um, Sam Horns um, actually taught me how to go out with a GoPro camera and start recording what I do and what and the activities. And I was really fortunate during the Festival of Archaeology that we were in that middle lockdown period where we were allowed some activities in person, that I was actually for the first time able to get out and about and go around the country and actually start meeting local people who are engaged in archaeological projects, archaeological activities, and just enjoying the places they live. And um, I was able to do a series of films. I was able to use social media to present those films and actually create quite a big conversation about what people were doing around the country. And I think for me, that's something the CBA needs to get much better at. Okay, we need to get out to our members, to our affiliate groups, to our CBA groups to find out what you're doing to help present that material and actually really celebrate it because then the amount of activity that was going on is truly amazing. And that really brings me back to what I'd like to focus on looking forward. What's the next year really got for us? Well, at the heart of it, the CBA needs to transform the offer we provide our members. We need to transform how we support and facilitate local groups, CBA groups, actually help people participate in archaeology. And there are five strands to our core activities. These are the five ways we do things. So the first one I want to focus on is our role as a national amenity society. Right. As a national amenity society. So the CBA has a formal role in the planning process. We are notified about changes to listed buildings and we are then allowed to comment on them. More than that, we actually um, manage a national database on behalf of all of the amenity societies that captures and manages how all of the amenity societies do their casework. So again, you can access that, you can go online, you can see what we're actually writing about planning cases and listed building applications, and it offers us a way to really engage with local communities if they're concerned about changes in their environment or changes to their heritage really important about how we present this role and how we actually undertake it. And again, when you read the magazine, you'll see Catherine from the casework team regularly writes case files where she picks out some of the cases that she's actually dealt with. But it's a really important way we can do more to engage people in how they can care for their own historic environment. Publications, the CBA publishes things. Obviously, most obviously is our magazine, British Archaeology but we also publish academic um, volumes, um, excavations. We, we have a more popular series such as our star car books. And then we have our small and brilliant um, guidebooks. Uh, so how you can go out and, and actually you know, do archeology span um, and how you can go out and spot things. But it is British archeology span that is, is actually one of our most important products. And here, I really do have to thank our editor, Mike Pitts, Mike single-handedly puts the magazine together, draws in the content, draws in these articles, and this year the quality of the articles has been truly exceptional. Um, I think we've been seeing some material presented in British archaeology that's not been seen elsewhere, and I think the power of the magazine to actually do that is really important. Beyond that, we've actually changed the format slightly so that there's more focus from CBA staff so there is obviously my director's article every, every month, but then we have two pages dedicated to Archaeology Active, which is actually the work around supporting groups and members. And we have two pages devoted to 
to our youth engagement work, Archaeology 8 to 25. So again, focusing in on two really critical strands of our activity. But publication is a huge thing for us. And, you know, I just, British archaeology, yes, it costs a lot of money to produce. But for us, we think it's really worth it in the quality of the articles that you get to see and experience. But publication isn't just limited to, to, to physical magazines or books. We now have an extraordinary catalogue of material over our social media, on our website and our YouTube channel. So when I joined two years ago, we had four hours of digital content on our YouTube channel. We're now into several hundred hours. And when you go on there, you can see all of the activity that the CBA has been up to, captured in some really easy bite-sized um, videos, all the way up to you know, full presentations of lectures and talks that have been given. And you know, it's an incredible resource. One of our most popular avenues for discussing archaeology is obviously our Twitter account. Archaeologists seem to adore Twitter. Uh, and again, it, it's a place where you can just get involved with conversations and we can actually start a much more meaningful dialogue. This is all about publications. This is all about presenting archaeology to a wider world. But coming back to the heart of the uh, CBA, our biggest area of work which we want to develop moving forward is actually what we do directly with our members. We have a new website and our new website offers us vast amounts of new functionality. We have a new events calendar where we are getting numerous groups now putting on the events that they're doing in their own local areas. You can go in on search on, the, on that calendar, you can see what's coming up and you can see how you can actually get involved. We have numerous resources on our website now, again, helping people to understand what it is they might want to do and actually understand what it is, you know, what does the CBA do? What is our role and how can you actually engage in that? And we're really committed to improving the member experience. So again, moving beyond you just getting a magazine, but to helping you really understand what it is that you facilitate and what your membership actually enables us to do and what you can get out of it. So again, it's a case of watch this space. We've got uh, loads of ideas about how we're going to actually do this. And we have a program again set out in the business plan that we launched last year to really take some of this critical work forward. A key part of our work is the events that we actually put on. I mentioned the Festival of Archaeology earlier. Um, I mentioned the AGM and the Beatrice Bacardi lecture. And I've mentioned the Archaeological Awards. Later today, you'll be hearing about the Marsh Charitable Trust, Marsh Ar Community Archaeology Awards that we'll be running. Um, and what this does is it creates an audience for the CBA. It creates an audience for our work. We need to do lots more to actually understand what that audience want, what you want, and actually how we might provide that. But some of the figures we're now generating in terms of people engaging, especially engaging online, are quite extraordinary. So in 20 2020, the Festival of Archaeology entirely online, um, saw 351 events online with a digital reach of over 24 million. In 2021, with our hybrid event, we over 16 days, we saw 1,229 events and a digital reach of over 71 million. That's how many times people are seeing the content and the material that's been generated by by the CBA, our members and our supporters. One statistic that really jumps out to me about last year's festival is the hashtag we use on social media, hashtag Festival of Archaeology, was actually used, used 16 million times in July. So again, what's fascinating is there is, no, uh, there is an enormous audience out there. How do we harness that audience? How do we bring some of that audience potentially to become our members? Really important. And again, what I'm keen to see is how do our members actually access that audience, engage with that audience, and certainly for our groups and, and societies, how do they actually build their own direct audiences from that? Finally, the last area that I want us to focus on, the other, the fifth core area of our activity, is obviously our Young Archaeologists Club. I am never, ever short for words about the Young Archaeologists Club. I, I think it's one of the most engaging things we do. This is a CBA delivered product. We work with volunteers who 
host and put on the yak branches. We provide resource material for them and celebrating what they do is one of the most enjoyable things. Just seeing the creativity that is actually out there. And again, we're looking at over 500 volunteers helping to facilitate yak groups across, across the United Kingdom. We're looking at in the region of 2000 young people actively engaged. I think that is incredible. And it is you as the members who help facilitate this activity. Your membership fees partially help us deliver the resources that these YAC groups use. Two things really stood out this year for me. Firstly, in Wales, with some of the Culture Recovery Fund money we got, we've actually created an online YAC branch. Again, some real challenges about traveling around, people actually wanting to do face-to-face -face activity this year. So this new online branch, again, is really helping us explore new ways of working. And then finally, a project which we're doing at the moment that you'll see every month this year is Letters to a Young Archaeologist, where we're getting a series of archaeologists um, to reflect back on their careers and actually their path and, and journeys into archaeology and actually writing them as if they were writing for a young archaeologist. And again, I think this way of engaging across the generations is really important and goes to the heart of what the CBA actually stands for. So it is those five, five areas, our statutory role, undertaking listing, listed building works, it's our publications um, and our social media, it's our members and groups, it's our events, and it's our YAC that, branches that really come together to give you a very clear favour of what the CBA stands for and what we are really keen to grow and develop and be more connected with our membership about. Thank you. I'll 